Now, Flathead County detectives set about trying to figure out exactly what happened when the plane came down and how and why death came to poor Diane. We concluded that she did, uh, she died by drowning. Diane did have a broken collarbone, a fracture in her neck, and a bruise to the right side of her forehead, all most likely incurred when the plane hit the water. But they were all survivable injuries. Except, when they found Diane, she was still strapped in. So, maybe the seatbelt, instead of saving her life, helped end it. Maybe the buckle jammed. Pat Walsh is a retired detective. He was a deputy back then. Her lap belt had flipped over so the buckle was against her body, or she couldn't have reached it in a hurry without realizing. And um, so th th the buckle had actually flipped around. Yes, it flipped, it flipped around, which is going to happen if it's a little bit loose and not cinched down tight. But aside from that, the belt was not malfunctioning in any way. It wasn't jammed, it wasn't locked. And yet, it was obvious Diane did not even try to get it open. Not like you'd think a person would if her life depended on it. One of the first things I checked during the autopsy was her fingernails. None of her nails were broke. There was no uh, bruising or anything of the fingertips. And you just imagine yourself being in a, in a craft that's sinking, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and you're holding scrambling your breath, and you're scrambling. Something. You know the belt's stuck. Yeah. You know, you can't get the belt free. What would, you know, I'd probably break my fingers trying to get the thing break. If, if nothing else, by straining, pulling sure. just on the belt fruitlessly to, un, un, until you have to give it up, you know. So there was none of that. And that, that I, I don't understand that today. Why did that happen?